Hi there. I am Jennifer Elizabeth Masters. I am a soul sculptor. I help you break the mold of past trauma and heartbreak so that you can have the amazing life and business of your dreams. If you were raised with somebody that was passive aggressive, you may be plagued with passive aggressive tendencies. You may also have had multiple relationships where passive aggressive communication style was in play. A passive aggressive communication style is hostility that is veiled. In other words, hostility, but it's disguised. And now there's, there's really two kinds of people that use passive aggressive behavior. One, the first one is someone who doesn't feel good about themselves. They don't have great self-esteem. They really um, don't want to have somebody not like them. And so they don't like to make unpopular decisions. They have difficulty saying no. So people that cannot say no directly will find a roundabout way to say it, but it doesn't communicate what they really feel. And often what happens, someone who is passive aggressive, they may be angry, but smiling. Their face and the way they feel don't match. So their, their communication is not clear. They may say something to you like this. Well, I guess I'm gonna to have to take the dog out. It's them feeling sorry for themselves. It's a martyrdom. They're throwing themselves a pity party. They feel like a victim. To the passive aggressive person, life is unjust, it is not fair. Uh, things are always going against them. Passive aggressive people tend to react rather than be proactive. And so they, if you ask them to do something, they may say, um, well, I, I suppose I could. Um, it is likely that I could look in my schedule and there may be uh, enough time for me to do, do you see what I mean? It's, they're not coming out and saying, I have a really busy schedule, I don't have the time to do it. They don't want to, have you dislike them. They don't want to make an unpopular decision. They want you to like them. That's the bottom line. Now, there is malicious passive aggressiveness where if you're in a marriage or in a partnership with somebody who's extremely passive aggressive, they may get upset with you, but, not, but I'm fine. Or they say nothing and they give you the silent treatment. And so, uh, passive aggressive people have a tendency to make you responsible for their happiness um, and when you don't when you disappoint them when you forget their birthday a oh, woe to you because um, <laughs> it could be a very a very long cold winter um, you know <laughs> in my household when my mother was upset when her birthday was missed by my father there might be weeks that she did not speak to him and so that silent treatment is, it's, it's a coldness. They, they may uh, turn you away from uh, sex or affection or even kissing. Don't touch me. Don't come near me. <laughs> That's the effect. They, they let you know, <laughs> but it's veiled and it's, it's, it's all hidden and it's subterfuge. They're not able to communicate directly. All right, so don't fall into the trap of being passive aggressive back because what happens is you're it's a lose-lose and you are going to be the bigger loser the second person so what you want to do instead is call the person who's passive aggressive out I saw you roll your eyes what is it that you feel about what I'm doing that bothers you could you tell me how you feel about that I saw your body language and you seemed exasperated. What is it that you want to say to me? And of course, 
the likelihood you're going to have to pull pull these these words out of that person uh, very gently, but do not become passive aggressive in return. It, it is not it's not good. All right. So another way that people are passive aggressive, um, they they may uh, criticize your um, your ideas. They may put you down. They may make you feel small and inadequate and insecure. They they may tell you, <laughs> boy, you look like crap today. Oh, I was just kidding. I, I know, I can feel you out there going, oh my God, I had that happen. So that is a, that's one that is pervasive. Um, if you're in a relationship with an alcoholic, that could be one of the things that happens often, where they often uh, couch what they're saying in sarcasm, which is another form, another word for abuse. Sarcasm, and I've written blogs about this, you can Google, sarcasm jennifer elizabeth masters and you'll see sarcasm is a form of abuse it is a way of underhanded uh, meanness and it's not nice so uh, and yes i saw that on a dating site somebody said they were sarcastic and i went delete no second glance as soon as somebody says they're sarcastic that's it they're gone it's abusive, plain and simple. Okay, so uh, passive aggressive people are deceitful, unreasonable, um, they're uncomfortable with the truth, it's indirect hostility, um, and uh, let's see. So you need to set clear expectations with them. Do not mirror their behavior. This is not something that you want to uh, pay back. Um, you have to face the fear. They are afraid of conflict. That's the issue. And, and we're going to be talking a lot about conflict over the next week because if you cannot handle conflict in a, in a romantic relationship, in a business relationship, you're going to be up, you know, creek without a paddle because conflict arises it arises all the time now we can be good humored about it we can be as positive loving and compassionate but facing it head on is the way to deal with conflict because if you try to avoid it it won't go well for you conflict needs to be dealt with face to face have a conversation rip the band-aid off Martha and it'll work out a lot better and and here's the other thing once you rip that band-aid off and you have that face-to-face -face and you say what's on your heart compassionately without judgment remember from your heart you're a conscious sovereign being uh, you're going to feel so much better because passive aggressive behavior is is a guilting mechanism they guilt you into doing their bidding they feel like a martyr and they're trying to guilt you into doing what they want. It's a manipulation. Manipulation is never good. All right, there's just a couple more things. Um, it is neglect. You know, there's also, you know, physical neglect. Um, and often, oh, it's uh, getting, keep, keeping you feeling off balance. And that feeling of being off balance can happen um, when you're dealing with a narcissist as well. So yes, passive aggressive people can also be narcissists. Yes, that can happen together. Or borderline personality disorder. So these things can be compounded when they're all stacked up one on top of another. And you wanna know the truth. <laughs> I dealt with a lot of that in my childhood. All right. Um, so there's a lot of excuses, lies, backstabbing, uh, you name it, <laughs> unreasonable blaming. Let's see, what else can we throw on this pile? Um, oh, there's also procrastination. So if you ask someone to do something, if it's in the workplace or even at home, if you ask somebody to do something and they really don't want to do it, but they don't want to tell you, hey, I'm not doing that. There's no way I'm not doing that job. I'm not gonna clean the oven for you. I don't want to. No, they'll just say, well, yeah, I'll get to it when I get to it. They'll stall 
and stall and maybe never do it. But they won't outright say, no, I'm not doing that. That would be honest communication, authentic communication. And people who practice passive aggressive communication are not honest. They are lying, they're manipulating, they're using guilt. It is not a healthy form of communication. All right. targeting the weakness of others and, and their insecurity. So that's that's kind of what this is all wrapped up in. You know that yeah, <laughs> you may be criticized for your cooking, you may be a fabulous cook, but you may have insecurities. And you, you may be married to someone or in partnership with someone that criticizes either the way you look, the way you smell, the way you cook. All of these types of criticisms are a way to put you down, to beat you down, to browbeat you, to play on your insecurities so you feel off balance. <sighs> Amen. Okay. And so how do we deal with passive aggressive behavior? You want to stay calm, take a nice deep breath, stay grounded, and don't get reactive. Instead, you don't want to meet fire with fire. It's like throwing gasoline on that fire. Poof! Big flames, don't want that. So when somebody says something that's indirect, you might wanna ask them questions. If they act angry or, um, or pissed off, you know, you could ask, what are you upset about? And if they respond, I'm fine, then you say, well, it doesn't sound like you're fine. The noises that you're making, your body language speak volumes of you not being fine. So call the behavior what it is, speak it, state what it is, and address it, but do it calmly. And good luck with that because um, I have to say my daughter is a master at handling passive aggressive behavior. Um, it, she worked in a kitchen where her boss came into the kitchen and, um, and didn't know what she was doing, but um, she, she kind of muscled in on, on her shift and, and her, she was very busy. And what the manager did was mess up the way she had things going. And then when my daughter caught the, the brunt of the blame from the chef, the manager just stood there and looked at her like, well, you should be doing a better job. So she never owned up. They will not take responsibility for their actions. Okay, so passive aggressive behavior, not good. Taking responsibility for your actions, very good. I'm Jennifer Elizabeth Masters. I hope you will check out my Infinite Everything package that will help you overcome past trauma and heartbreak in a variety of different ways. 51 red flags in there. There's 19 energy clearings. It's a fabulous package. It is on my Facebook page, on my business page, on my wall. It's called Infinite Everything. I invite you to check it out. Thank you so much for being here. Mwah! I love you. Have a great rest of your night.